Well, we're gonna try to get this um, whole blind up today. So me and my wife, we loaded up everything on the trailer and we got it all out here. The, uh, all four walls and the roof and tools. So we'll see if we can do this, just me and her. Um, it's not gonna be easy. We got about a 60 yard walk to, to get all this stuff back there and then we have to lift it up 12 feet. So here we go. Trees are upside down. I forget how hard this was to get the walls up. So I just put a couple screws, three inch in the bottom. So they bite into the uh, floor joist. And then because I left three and a half inches short on each wall, I can bring them together like this. I don't even use a level, and I just tack them together. So now, those two walls support each other. The first one I put four screws in. And then I put one short brace um, and I just toe nailed it or screw nailed it. However you want to say that to the floor. And then I got this wall up. So now the next wall will be the side wall. And if I remember right, the last wall is the worst because then you're boxed in and uh, it's hard to maneuver the wall because you only have one side that you can overhang it but we'll see if i have the strength to do all four 
and then put the roof on. So you can see how this wall's taller and all the rest of the walls will be a foot shorter. So the roof will shed off this direction. That'll create the angle. And I put the door, which is just one giant piece of uh, window um, toward the area where I think that the shots will mostly come from because this will give me the biggest angle to shoot from. It'll also make the most motion when I open it. But from this direction, the deer, um, they turn at a 90 to me right here. So hopefully I'll be able to see them coming, get ready for the shot, have the door open. And I actually swing them in <coughs> instead of out. And then I'll be able to get the shot. So the trail is right there. And this is six by six is a great size for bow hunting. You could go smaller with gun, but I don't think I would go any smaller with, with a bow. I think six is the best because you got that arrow, you know, sticking out before you draw. And there's too much <coughs> room for error and hitting a wall, making noise. So we got three walls on and the roof rafters. So now we're going to get this last wall on which is going to be the toughest, I imagine. Well, we got all the walls up and the roof rafters on. So I put three walls up and pinned them all together on the corners so it was stable. And then my wife lifted the, the rafters up to me and with a ladder up there, I was able to get them up on top. Then we got the, then I pinned two of the front sides um, of the rafter, the front half of it on the uh, tallest wall, but I left the other half um, free so when we picked up this wall which was a pain actually all the walls are a pain it's a two-man job two man job but we got it that's so not nice to me so we lifted up this wall and then we the back half was able to move a little bit so we could prop it up and get it in there and then pin it all together and it's it's sturdy so then i was able to pin the roof rafters on then i cut um it's all it's overhung a foot on all sides and this is six by six so it's an eight by eight uh platform on the on the roof so two sheets of plywood um covered all up but i cut them long ways right down the middle so they were easier to pick up hand to me and then i was on a ladder inside slid them up through the rafters and then i pinned three down and then my wife handed the three sheets of metal that are eight feet long and they're three feet wide, so it'll cover the entire roof. And we might, I might have to overlap it one section or, or I have to figure that out once I'm up there. But anyway, we got all the roof up there too. So we were able to do that without being on the roof of it itself. So she handed it up to me in the box blind and then I um, stuck it through the rafters because I'd left that last quarter sheet out. So now what I'm gonna do, there's a small maple tree right next to the platform and I'm gonna put my climbing sticks on there and then put my harness on, 
with my lineman belt, climb all the way up there and then put a tether on the top of that tree. Then I can step off onto the roof and I'm tethered. So if I fall, I'll only fall like, I don't know, six feet instead of 16 feet or whatever it is. Actually, probably 20 because it's 12 and eight. Yeah, about 20 feet tall to the roof. And then I'll be able to pin everything down and then um, be tethered off to that small maple tree and then hopefully climb down safely. <laughs> So that's where we're at now. So there we go, it's up. Nobody got hurt. I just have to do the windows and doors. And that's pretty much um, doing your own thing. There you have some people use plexiglass. I'm gonna use uh, old windows that came out of a house, um, double pane. So hopefully they don't uh, condensate when you use a Mr. Buddy heater during like uh, gun season or, or muzzle loader. So I have a foot long overhang on everything. There is a couple other things I have to do. I have to plug up the, uh, the eaves with two by fours, and I will also spray foam all the cracks. Once I plug up those holes, I'll just stick a two by four in there, screw it from both sides, and then spray foam all corners and, and stuff so bugs can't get in and uh, mice as easily once the windows are in and the door. Um, so this is 12 feet tall to the platform and then eight or seven foot sidewalls. You can see I spray painted the trees upside down. I didn't really look when I was spray painting the walls, which one was bottom and top, but it doesn't matter. They uh, still, still do its job. But you can see why I went with a, a sky blue. So when the leaves are off, um, this will match the, the sky instead of a darker color. And then I also am going to take some spray paint uh, green next year and just put some leaves and and um, So it looks like there's brush and whatever because there's pine trees around here So they're all be there will always be cover even during the winter time So we'll go up there and take a look quick the one thing I will do is is put a two by four underneath here where the two pieces of plywood come together and that'll get rid of uh, that little bounce. I'll put one right underneath here all the way across um, which will take three scab boards and then also I'm not going to get to it this year I have to do little triangles of the T111 just cut that right there and pin it on but this is as far as I'm going to take it this year I may do some windows I don't know um, it's not going to be able to hold heat this year, but it's it's bow season, so I'm pretty much done um, at this point. It won't uh, get too much uh, rain in here and snow, especially if I get these windows in. I mean, a little bit won't hurt anything. Uh, and then next year, early in the spring, or even after I get the windows and doors in, I'll cut a piece of carpet and I'll put it in here. And that way, that carpet will have a long time to uh, get rid of the smell. And then it quiets it. So you can walk around here. You don't have to worry about shuffling your feet or anything like that. We have a good view off all the sides. Nice trail there. I have uh, two of my hybrid oak trees planted over on this side. And there is a trail that comes through there. And then I also have that shooting lane. And I hope to make a small food plot, um, more of a trail planted in clover in that area next year. And then this one is super thick brush right here. And I cut a trail that goes right through there. 
So off of the main trail on the right, if they ever want to split, they see that, they can walk down there and that'll give me a, a close 10 yard shot. I'll probably hang a couple mock um, scrapes along that trail. There's also rubs already from previous years here. So my bedding is to the right, about 100 and about 100 yards, a little over. So there you go, six by six stand. It is a pain in the ass to get these walls up. Uh, two guys would be better. Two strong guys to lift the walls up, but uh, I was able to do it with my wife, so. See the rafters are just two by fours. Two of them are at six feet and then two feet in from the sides. So from here to here is six foot and that lines up with the six foot walls. And then those are just two foot. And I have foot long overhangs. On all sides. Which is super important to, to uh, protect the walls and everything from rain. The whole, the entire thing will last longer. I mean, the bigger the eaves, the better. So, um, now I just have to build a staircase up there. I'm not going to build a, an entire staircase. What I do is I take two two by eights and uh, I put them on an angle and I cut two by fours flat and I um, just pin them inside, screw them from the, the the sides in, and I make like a. It's, it's not. It's better than a ladder because it's so much on an angle that you can kind of crawl up and, and use your hands. Um, for handholds on the sides and then I put uh, tread tape on it before the season starts um, and then uh, snow and ice and stuff you have a better traction from the two by fours so it's worked really well on the other two that I've done